Bill Zeitler was born to fly and has logged thousands of hours in the air. During the 60s, he worked for Air America, flying both fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters over Southeast Asia. Bill also worked for a while as a commercial helicopter pilot in Florida. Later, while working as a stockbroker, Bill flew just for the fun of it. When he bought property on Lake Cortonia in Vermont, Bill came one step closer to achieving a lifelong dream, that of having a house where he could keep an airplane in his backyard. The big question was, what kind of an airplane? Would it be a light plane with floats, or would it be an amphibian? Bill did his homework and weighed all the options, including the choices between buying a production plane or building an experimental light support airplane from a kit. After much agony, he made a decision. Bill chose the Aventure 2 kit by Aero Adventures in Rockledge, Florida. The big mystery is how he managed to talk Lois into the idea of building an airplane. If that wasn't enough, he would fly it off the lake behind their Vermont summer home. This is the epic story of how November 5-8 November Uniform was built in its first flights off the lake in Vermont. Bill was ready to take delivery of his kit at the Aero Adventure plant in Rockledge. Steve Connors loaned Bill a trailer to carry the parts from Florida to Vermont where he would build the airplane. Bill also asked me, Joe Barcheski, to help on this trip of over 1,200 miles. We arrived at the plant early in the morning and Bill went immediately to work on the inventory with Tom Xavier. Aero Adventures. While this was going on, Bob Boswell, the president of Aero Adventures, took me for a ride in their demonstrator. We took off and flew out over Merritt Island and then over the ocean. In a few minutes, we crossed back over Cocoa Beach near Cape Canaveral and headed for the lakes west of Cocoa. The best part of this flight was the two water landings and takeoffs from the lakes. Wow, it's easy to see why Bill chose this airplane. All too soon we were back at the runway in Rockledge. With the inventory completed, we started to load the trailer. By late afternoon, we were ready to go. However. During the first 10 miles on I-95, we had to stop several times to secure the tarp better. After that, we only stopped for gas, food, and a few hours of sleep at a rest area. Having the kit in Vermont didn't mean that Bill could just start assembling the airplane. First, he had to prepare a workshop in the basement of the lake house. This involved setting up his tools and a desk to keep the required paperwork in order. He also had to organize the parts and place them into various bins and racks. Now Bill was ready to start building his airplane. By this time, Bill's two grandsons, Chip and Lee, came up from Florida to help out. It was a great learning experience for the kids and a big help for Bill. Even Lois was put to work. Soon the collection of parts was starting to look like an airplane, but it was also apparent that the plane was too big to be assembled in the basement workshop. So Bill and the boys went to work building a hangar right next to the basement door. Peter Cook and I were working at the Newport Boat Show and had a few days off before the Norwalk Show. So we drove up to Vermont to check on progress. 
Tom Sivier from the factory was there along with Charlie Weitz and Frank Vesper. Bill had all the help he needed, and we got a lot done in a few days. The top of the fuselage was installed, along with a forward compartment and instrument panel. Next, with Peter's help, sitting in the cockpit, the windshield was riveted in place. The last big item to be installed was the engine. After that, Bill and Lois continued working on the airplane. With a nip in the air and the fall foliage in its full glory, it was time to head south again. The hangar was tilted on its side and the unfinished airplane was then loaded onto the trailer. Bill and Lois were now ready to head back to Florida for the winter. Now back at the factory in Rockledge, the prop was installed. Bill put the fabric on the wings and then shrunk it tight using a hot iron. Now the wings were ready to be installed on the airplane. With the right strut in place, the wing was then installed. The same process was repeated for the left wing. After the sponsons were installed, it appeared that the airplane was ready to fly. But a series of delays kept the airplane grounded. Before Bill's airplane could actually fly, it had to go through some rigorous testing before it could be certified by the FAA. Part of this flight testing involved running the engine while the tailwheel was tied to a fence post at the airport. Now, after almost a full year, Bill's airplane was in the air. For that first flight, Bob Boswell was at the controls. Soon afterwards, Bill flew the airplane from Rockledge to Venice, Florida, where he continued the testing to put the required 40 hours before certification. Now with an airworthiness certificate, Bill was ready to start planning the trip back to Vermont. On June 14, 2009, I drove my MX-5 from Pompano Beach to Sarasota to meet up with Bill and the rest of the crew. The next day, Bill took me for a spin around Venice Airport. It was short, but oh, was it sweet. Upon landing, Bill took the airplane over and topped off the tanks for the trip north the next day. That night, the full crew met at Bill's house to go over the details of what we were about to do. Bill was the pilot in command and Dave Payne, his co-pilot and navigator. The ground crew consisted of Jeff Connor, driver, and me, your humble narrator and all-around gopher. Bright and early the next morning, we were packed and ready to go, including my car on the trailer for the trip north. We also carried jerry cans with 93 octane gas to refuel the aircraft that stops along the way. Our first gas stop was in Ocala, Florida. On that first day, we also stopped at Brunswick, Georgia, where we had lunch, and then went on to Orangeburg, South Carolina, where we spent the night. The plane was prepped and ready to go. Unfortunately, there were some weather